checked this out. Access the control center, toggling on low power mode, and my wallpaper changes every single time in which I do it. But don't worry, I got you covered because I'm gonna be showing you how to do that in this video, along with a few other tips and tricks for your iPhone. Now that trick I just showed you, we're actually gonna jump into that later in the video, but I do have everything timestamped down below in case you wanna jump around. But if you're new to the channel, welcome. I go by Tech Me Out, and up here I like to talk about pretty much anything in relation to technology. So if that's something that you're interested in as well, you can feel free to hit the subscribe button and the like button if you feel inclined to. Now I have done videos like this in the past, so I'm gonna link them down below in the description box because this is an ongoing series. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is how you can basically close a bunch of different apps at once in your multitask switcher. So normally when you're in your multitask switcher view and you wanna close the app, you literally have to swipe one at a time. But with this trick, you can actually take about three fingers and swipe up and it's gonna allow you to close more than one at a time. Now, for those of you that have been looking for a quicker and easier way to customize the look of, you know, your icons on your home screen, there's a new app that you can check out if you're on iOS 14.3. So what you're gonna have to do is head into your app store, and once you're in there, you're gonna download an application called Maloco. And once you have it installed, open it up, and then you're gonna be greeted with a bunch of different icon packs that look absolutely beautiful, so you don't have to search the web for individual icons and all that that's involved with the previous method that we used to use. So in this case, I'm gonna demo it with Felicity here, so I'm gonna tap Get, and it gives me some more information about it, and it allows me to see that I can download just the system applications or I can get the third-party apps. So what I wanna do is download the system apps first, and it's gonna let you know that they're trying to configure a profile. So you're gonna select allow. So then what you have to do is head into your settings and then you're gonna go down to general and then you're gonna tap on profile and you're gonna make sure that this one here is installed. So now when we go to our home screen, you'll see that the custom icon pack has installed itself onto your phone. And what it does is it basically adds the system applications onto your home screen so you can just remove the ones that you don't want, keep the ones in which you do. But not only do I want to install the system apps, I also want to install the third-party applications. So I'm gonna head back into Maloco. This time I'm gonna select download for the third-party apps. I'm gonna select allow. And now it wants me to install another profile. So I'm gonna hit close here and then head back into my settings. And now within the profile section, I wanna tap on Felicity third-party apps and then select install. So then when you go back to your home screen, you'll be able to see that they installed a few third-party apps for you for the custom icons as well. But definitely an easier way to get the custom icons on your home screen without having to go search for them and then create the shortcuts and all that. But if you don't feel comfortable installing a profile on your phone and you do wanna know how to go about customizing your icons like this by using shortcuts, I'ma link my video that I did a few weeks ago on that subject so you can check it out. Now with the release of iOS 14.3 came some improvements on the privacy features offered on your phone. And two areas in which it gives you more information on is app privacy and data linked details. And what this is gonna do is give you more details on what information from your phone is being shared with the apps in which you're installing. So the way you can go about getting that is heading into the app store, and then once you're in there, let's go to something like Facebook. And then we're gonna scroll down here. And you'll notice now that you have this section called app privacy. And you can see here the data that's used to track you and the data that's linked to you. And Facebook wants to know a lot of your personal information, y'all. And I like the fact that if you tap on learn more, it actually breaks down what it means by app privacy so that if you don't understand what it's talking about, you can basically become better informed by going in here. So that's pretty nice. But if you happen to tap on one of these two areas, it gives you even more information in which it's, you know, gathering about you. Speaking of tips and tricks, if you've been eyeing a new iPhone 12 and you did not get one for Christmas, I got a solution for you. And it comes from our sponsor, Trade More. If you've been following the channel, you know I've worked with Trade More in the past. And basically, they offer a really great service option to sell your electronics, from phones to tablets and smartwatches. So if you've been eyeing this new phone here, but you're a little short on cash, this is a great way to get some money to go towards it. All you have to do is follow the link down below in the description box, select the device that you're interested in selling, provide a little bit of information about the device, condition, and specifications such as the carrier and the color. And then from there, you can review the offer details and it's gonna lock that in for you for 30 days. So you can kind of simmer on it a bit. You don't have to rush and make a decision. But if you do decide to go ahead and sell your item at that price, you're gonna then enter your contact information and shipping details so that you can receive your pre-packaged, prepaid box to mail your device in to trade more. And when it comes to payment, you'll receive a virtual MasterCard gift card or you can get paid via PayPal. Now, 
I've had my scenarios in the past where I've tried to sell electronics online and it didn't always go that smoothly. So it's great to know that there's a nice trustworthy option out there that you can utilize to sell your electronics. And plus on top of that, you can even buy certified used fully inspected devices to save a little bit of money. This is something I consider a really great option just when you wanna, you know, give yourself a little self care. Sell some tech so you can buy some tech. Now for those of you that may have found yourself in a scenario where you may want to set up Face ID for someone else to access your phone, like maybe your partner, or maybe if you just change your look a lot, you can actually go into your settings for Face ID and set up alternate appearance. So the way you go about accessing this is you're gonna head into your settings and then you're gonna go down to face ID and passcode. And then within here, you're gonna tap on set up an alternate appearance and then you can go about setting up that appearance. Now I wonder if this will work with a face mask. I haven't tried it, but it might be worth a try. Now, if you've ever been on Safari and reading an article and kind of wanna streamline what you're seeing so that you don't see all the ads and everything like that, then something that you're gonna to wanna to turn on is reader view. The way you go about accessing that is to tap the double A's in the top left and then you're gonna tap on show reader view and as you can see it kind of cleans up the things that we were seeing at first so that it just focuses on the text and the images in the article but you can actually take this a step further in toggling on dark mode by tapping the double A's again and then choosing um, which type of color theme that you want I personally like to use you know a white background with black text or I might use this one or that one but for whatever reason, reading white text on a black background does not fare well with my eyes. I know a lot of people like dark mode and maybe it's just me. Y'all can let me know down below in the comment section. Do you have trouble as well seeing white text on black backgrounds? My eyes just, I don't, I don't know. It just, it hurts my head a little bit. Um, but you can also adjust your font if you wanted to. You do have a couple of options in which you could choose from within here, but this, ultimately just makes a better reading experience that's more personalized to you and what you like. Now, another quick tip for you is the ability to automatically direct your app downloads to the app library so that they don't appear on your home screen. And you can access that by heading into your settings. And then once you're in there, you're gonna to navigate to home screen. And within the newly downloaded app section, you're gonna make sure that app library only is checked so that anytime you download an app, it just automatically routes there and doesn't clutter up your home screen. Now, another cool thing that you can do is quickly navigate back within your settings. And this is super handy, especially when you're deep within a subcategory within your settings, you no longer have to keep swiping back page by page. I can just press and hold on the back button here and then slide down to wherever I wanna to navigate to and it instantly takes me back to that section. Another quick action for you is the ability to quickly record when you're in your camera. So basically what you're doing is activating single take mode and the way you go about doing it is to long press your volume up button and as long as you're pressing that it is recording and the moment that you release it it stops. So that's just a really quick way to take a video without having to actually navigate to the video option. You can also long press the volume down button to do the same action. But instead of it doing the single take option for the volume up and down button, you can actually head into your settings and go down to your camera section and then toggle on use volume up for burst. So now when you turn that on and you head back into your camera and you press and hold the volume up button, it now takes a series of photos instead. Now this next one is pretty cool because it basically allows you to add like a keyword to your photos. So in order to do that, you're gonna head into your photos and choose a picture and then you're gonna swipe up on that picture. And you're gonna see a section here that says add a caption. But instead of adding a caption, we're gonna treat it like a keyword, so we're gonna keep it short and sweet. So in this case, I'm gonna tap here and I'm gonna type in nieces. So now when you search for that word, anything in which you tag with that keyword will come up. Now a feature that's built into your phone with iOS 14 is something called sound recognition. So that when specific sounds are heard, your phone will basically notify you. So if you're interested in turning this feature on, you're gonna head into your settings and you're gonna navigate to control center and you're gonna scroll down until you see sound recognition. And then you're gonna tap the plus symbol and it's gonna get added into your included controls so that now when you swipe down in your control center, you'll see this icon here. Now you gotta make sure that you actually turn the feature on and then choose the sound in which you wanna be notified about. So I'm gonna choose a doorbell sound. So this is something to note though because you cannot use Hey Siri while you're using sound recognition. But I'm cool with that so I'm gonna go ahead and hit turn on sound recognition. And now anytime in which it hears a doorbell sound, I'll get a banner notification. Now it is a little finicky though because I noticed when testing it, sometimes it would work, sometimes it wouldn't. So I don't know, I wouldn't solely rely on it, but it's still nice to have and know about. Now if you've ever found yourself in a scenario where you want to quickly scan a QR code, 
there's a couple of ways in which you can go about doing so. So normally you can do it by using your camera app here, but another way in which you can is to head over into Spotlight and then you're gonna type in code scanner and it's gonna pull up an application in which you can use to scan the QR code. And you can even add it if you wanted to your control center. So if you jump back into settings and you head into control center and you search for code scanner, you can hit the plus symbol and now it's gonna be listed in there with the rest of your shortcuts to your favorite apps. Now, to create the setting for it to automatically change your wallpaper when certain actions happen. Let's do it. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is head into your photos and create an album for the photos in which you want it to rotate. Now in my case, I already have an album that I'm gonna use called Wallpapers here. Then next you're gonna head into your shortcuts application and we're gonna tap the plus symbol in the top right. We're gonna select add action and we're gonna search for up here, find photos. And we're gonna select that action. And then we're gonna to wanna to add a filter now in this case, I don't want it to pull my recent album, so I'm just gonna tap here and I'm gonna change it to the album in which I made, which is called Wallpapers. And then if you want, you can actually customize the sort by option so that it will go in and randomly choose a picture. So I'm gonna hit random. And then we're gonna turn on the limit option. And we're gonna make sure that it's only grabbing one photo and we're gonna do that by hitting this minus symbol until it gets down to the number one. Breathe, we are almost there. So next we're gonna hit the plus symbol and we're gonna search for set wallpaper. So at this moment it's set to change my lock screen and my home screen, but if you want it to just change one or the other, you're gonna tap on it and then you're gonna select the one in which you want it to change. But I wanted to change both, so I'm gonna just hit done here. Now next you're gonna wanna tap on show more and you're gonna toggle off show preview. And then from here we're gonna select next and we're gonna name this shortcut. So I'm gonna name this random wallpapers. Now I'm gonna select done. So now we have our random wallpapers shortcut. So normally that means you can just tap on it and then it'll randomly choose a wallpaper. But we're gonna take it a step further so that it chooses a certain wallpaper when a specific action happens. And we're gonna do that by tapping on automation in the bottom center. And then we're gonna hit the plus symbol and we're gonna choose personal automation. Now you can go in here and choose which particular action you want to happen for it to trigger a random wallpaper to appear. Now in my case, I like to have a different wallpaper when I'm in low power mode, but you have a ton of different options which you could choose from. You can make it so that your wallpaper changes at a certain time of day, or maybe your wallpaper changes at sunrise or when you arrive home or when you leave home. But for this example, we're gonna do low power mode. So I'm gonna tap on that and I'm gonna leave mine set at is turned on so that when I activate low power mode, that's when it toggles the wallpaper. And I'm gonna select next. So now I'm gonna hit add action and I'm gonna tap up here and I'm gonna search for run shortcut. Then once I see that option, I'm gonna tap on it here. What we're gonna do here is tap on shortcut and then we're gonna search for random wallpapers because we want it to run that shortcut. So I'm gonna select that here and now we can tap on next and we're gonna make sure we toggle off ask before running because we don't want it to get confirmation that we want this to run when we toggle on low power mode. And from here, we're just gonna select done. And that's it. So now we're gonna test it. So I'm gonna slide down my control center and I'm gonna turn on low power mode and my wallpaper, as you see, did and should change. So round of applause to all of you out there that has success with that because I know there was a lot of steps involved. Now, I know something that came with iOS 14.3 that drives me nuts, and that is this banner that appears anytime in which you open a shortcut. I can't stand it. I hate the fact that the banner's there. It makes me realize how much I typically tap the top of my screen to do something within an app because it blocks it, and I cannot dismiss the banner. It does not disappear. You literally have to wait until it finishes displaying itself up there. I low key like it loading the shortcut screen before it loaded the app over this particular method. But technically there's a way in which you can disable the banners from even appearing. So even though I can't see the option, I'm gonna still show you how to do so in case you can. So in order to disable those banners, you're gonna head into settings, you're gonna go into your screen time section, and then you're gonna head into screen time. And then what you're gonna do is select see all activity. And within here, you're gonna to navigate to the bottom where it says notifications. And then you're gonna tap show more until you see the shortcut. <gasps> it wasn't there before. 
I knew it was gonna make a lie out of me as soon as I started filming this because this whole time in which I was testing this, it was not there. But nonetheless, I'm grateful that it is. So you may notice right now that the little arrow here to show more for it is not visible. So in order to make it visible, we're gonna make sure that it says notifications for daily average by tapping here. And then we're gonna navigate back down the shortcuts and you see we now have the arrow. So we can go in there and tap on that. Then what you're gonna wanna make sure that you do is toggle off allow notifications. So now technically when I hit settings right now, why am I still seeing this ugly banner? is not supposed to be showing me that. But technically you should not be seeing a banner, you know, when you open up an application. I don't know why I still am. Like I said, mine has been acting funny. So yeah, take this tip right here with a grain of salt. Maybe y'all gotta tech me out right about now. Let me know down below in the comment section if you got any suggestions to get mine's working properly. But hopefully yours did. But I seen it work, so I know it has the capability to work. I just don't know why it won't work for me. But that's gonna do it for part three of my iPhone tips and tricks. Part four will be coming probably next month. This is probably gonna be my last video for the year, y'all. Definitely wishing you all peace and prosperity and good health into the new year. So I will see you all in 2021. And as always, thanks for taking the time out to let me tech you out. <laughs>